you felt too much. Your style was too much. There's been a bit of a controversy with a creator that I didn't know until the controversy happened and I have mentioned her in my previous video if you watched it you know the reason for that mention being we keep on having the same influencers over and over and over again there's always so much press going on around fashion where I think that maybe the journalists don't really know much about fashion maybe that's what it is but they oftentimes talk about fashion girls and they mentioned people like Hailey Bieber. Who else? Oh my god. Hailey Bieber adjacent girls. I couldn't name you like a lot of names, but you know them in the sense of hearing about them because of people bringing them up in fashion discussions when it doesn't really make any sense that you would even bring them up because they're wearing athleisure and what we are doing is constantly rebranding minimalism or simple clothes with different types of aesthetics like clean girl aesthetic old money aesthetic if i wanted to look decent but i did not give a fuck about fashion i would wear what matilda is wearing right like it's cute but it's kind of like i don't know anything about anything i'm not really interested in fashion i mean i understand that there's people who like simple things that's totally fine like i'm not here to yuck your yum but this isn't original okay today we're talking about jerf avenue so we're talking about matilda jerf as well and the funniest part about it is that people have even brought up words like vintage style with her which i at this point we're just saying words okay let's be real here at this point we're just naming random things without any meaning whatsoever this is the type of person the type of style we're dealing with today which is kind of like influencers that the public is trying to gaslight everyone into thinking are fashion people okay most of all i wanted to talk about dupes copying copyright and who are designers and who aren't really i did not really care about the situation when it just happened but it kept on just progressing and more and more things kept on coming out that were just a little bit ridiculous so now <laughs> i realized that a lot of people don't know the difference between what is a dupe what is a counterfeit product what is possible in terms of copyright in the design world and a bunch of things like that so we're gonna quickly go through what even happened okay there are two things that came up with Jerf Avenue and with Matilda Jerf herself in the past. I would say it happened in October mostly, but I think that there is one topic that everyone talked about, which is copyright claims from Jerf Avenue when it comes to small creators on TikTok. The second thing that I want to talk about a little bit more because I don't think that people talked about it nearly enough and it is the jerf fashion show and work models profits and other things like that so first jerf is banning tiktok videos copyright claiming them which is really interesting that it's so fucking easy to do on tiktok that you just go kind of like they're talking about something that looks like my product and they would just take it down that's crazy that's absolutely crazy tiktok get on that because that's um you really give a lot of power to copyright owners and and the funniest thing about it is that Jerf Avenue actually claimed that people cannot speak of anything that even remotely looks like Jerf Avenue pieces if they are not authentically Jerf Avenue. The Lord. Anyway, let's look at this particular video that kind of blew this whole situation up, right? I was hyping up these pajamas, $120 pajamas. Immediately after I purchased these, I started seeing creators posting about the Amazon version. They were a fraction of the price. They looked absolutely identical. Then I got my Deserve Avenue pajamas in the mail, and I have to say, they are very soft. And I felt good about supporting the original designer. So there's that. Moral of the story, I was hyping up their pajamas that I bought from their website. So you can imagine my surprise when I woke up to this message. I had seen the videos where creators were upset that Deserve Avenue was having their content Content removed because of copyright claims. Deserve Avenue immediately started backtracking. They had said in their statement the reason the videos were getting removed was because of their IP firm and they've asked them to stop removing videos. They just want to like reach out to the creators directly and discuss things with them, which is what this message is saying. Um, you didn't even watch my video. There's nothing to discuss here. I was 
backing your brand is a mistake on my part. If your company values are strong, people are still gonna buy from you instead of from the mass market for a cheaper price. That's what I did, but now I regret it. So best of luck. First and foremost, you can't copyright regular designs of regular clothes. If you make a white t-shirt, you cannot claim to own that design. There are some designs that do get some protection, some legal protection, okay? However, those are usually patents. And the way that you get a patent, first of all, it is a headache and a half, okay? It can take years to get a patent. I'm not even fucking kidding. Like, seriously. It takes that long and it's such an expensive uh, process, okay? And the only way you could actually secure it, the only way you could actually get anyone to agree to protect your intellectual property is if your design is doing something new. You can't just finesse your way into it how, you know, a lot of people like Matilda who are just social media people, people who are just simply in marketing, not designers, not creators, just marketing people think they can finesse their way into and you cannot really do that with regular designs. You would have to come up with new type of fabric. So you cannot get anybody to be like, yeah, this design is protected, except you can, for example, get the fabric protected. Specifically that fabric in terms of like how, for example, it's woven together or how, like what kind of components are used in it. You can create a new type of textile that could be protected by a patent. By the way, you would have to make really quick moves and you would have to have some coin on the side to do that, okay? Even then, if someone were to take the design of the thing, not the actual like formula, <laughs> you know, or the, um, way it's specifically created there's nothing you can do like it's just there's nothing you can do really however a brand that's a brand with a social media star in the mix is not an actual designer or someone who has intellectual property because girly girl like i'm just looking at that website right and the fact of the matter is the fabrics are not innovative the process of making it is not innovative the pieces themselves are not only not innovative but they're not even something that i could say has any difference from any other basic ass brand so there is no way you can go and claim that this turtleneck this like black vest turtleneck no one can produce it now because matilda produced it she designed it she was the first one she's such a maverick <laughs> She is such a designer. How could she possibly have come up with that on her own? We would be debating for like centuries the same way we debate about Shakespeare if it was one person or multiple because it's just there's so much genius that goes into this <laughs> that we would never be able to do that without Matilda in the, in the game, you know? The designs are not innovative. The designs, not only are they not innovative, the funniest thing is that a lot of people have talked about this, that they've been following her for a really long time before she even had her own brand. And they realized that a lot of her uh, releases are basically, literally, a copy, a one-to-one -one copy of a designer brand piece, which once again, no one's going to come after her with like, uh, you know, claims that it belongs to them because it's just such a basic ass design that no one will be able to prove anything. She basically just like copied a bunch of things that she was wearing before she got that brand. And kind of reminds me of Cold Gaia situation. I don't know if you remember it. It was like a whole thing with this Cold Gaia bag where they had a whole waiting list and whatever. And then they went after the knockoffs in quotations like uh, Steve Madden and they, they said that they were going to sue them. If Steve Madden just sued them back <laughs> because the fact that Cold Gaia were trying to say that this is, you know, something that could be proven in court, they were definitely saying that they invented this type of bag. And um, it is just ridiculous because this bag is literally a copy of a traditional Japanese bamboo picnic bag design. It is one of those things where it kind of became funny because Cold Guy literally ripped somebody else off, which now you cannot really prove anything or whatever, but it's also coming from Japanese culture. So it's 
a whole chain of events that led to them creating that bag so it's a little bit it's kind of it's just so it's a little stupid i'm not gonna lie i don't know who decided to do all that at cold gaia and why they thought that anyone's gonna give a fuck and anyone's gonna give them the rights to traditional japanese accessory like you have to be serious like it's just a little stupid if you think that you have popularized it again and you were in charge of that or whatever the fuck go ahead and innovate more and keep on innovating so people notice you as an innovator and um that's about it bitch like i don't know what to tell you you cannot be taking inspiration in quotations and literally taking somebody else's design and then screaming that someone else is copying you and this is exactly what's going on with miss jerv girly you have got to at least design a thing or two that has something interesting to offer whether it is revival of something that is no longer in use or something new it needs to be something i'm not saying that it needs to be entirely unique because nothing is new under the sun even if someone is showing a dupe okay <laughs> or even a fucking counterfeit even a counterfeit and the difference between a dupe and a counterfeit is that dupes cannot be really legally reprimanded because they do not use anything that is legally protected so for example a bag that kind of uses something similar to a chanel logo is not going to get sued because they cannot really say that it's a counterfeit that they are pretending to be chanel entirely it's clear that it's not a chanel logo so it's kind of like well it's hard to prove whatever whatever right when it comes to something like completely ripping off the louis vuitton symbol and putting it all over your bag or whatever the fuck that's when you can get in trouble right even if it's a counterfeit in the video right you cannot copyright claim a video because a video in itself is a product if you are coming in and saying that this video has my product in it or has a product that looks like my product it's insane that tiktok would just go yeah you know what let's take it down jerv ivan you are claiming that the pattern is copyrighted even if the pattern is copyrighted you cannot take media that talks about this pattern down it's just not how it fucking works the, the reason the, just the thought of tiktok agreeing to it is ridiculous you cannot be doing that but at the same time i understand their frustration that this tiktoker is promoting a product that's a copy of theirs for a fraction of the price whatever the fuck you know it's kind of like well it kind of sucks that you're promoting it whatever whatever right but at the same time this girl did not even promote that product she actually said that it's not worth it and you should buy the jerf one and then she still got her video taken down which just means that they are sloppy and useless at doing their jobs which isn't just absolutely at another level of annoying all of this taken in mind you should be going after people who are selling and producing it that's where you can at least have at least one leg to stand on because in other regards when it comes to going after tiktokers or whatever like i girl i don't know what the fuck to tell you but that is not someone you can legally reprimand for having the product someone who created it that's where you can i actually talk about it especially when it comes to specifically her pajama sets because they have the copyrighted print right everything else you can't really fucking do that they say it's ethically made however it turns out that when they talk about paying fairly to their workers they do not include the factory workers which always baffles me because who the fuck makes the product explain that to me i will just sit here and wait for you to explain who does the actual work who does it yeah the factory workers so you have to be paying them well not bullshit money okay second of all it's very hard to produce things ethically i'm expecting them to do it though because she's been a really big big creator before she got her brand so she can afford to go through all the hoops and find proper factories to work with if i could do it that bitch could do it too, okay? So, just saying. What makes me skeptical is their approach to a lot of other things. Like, for example, the fact that in 2023, Jerf Avenue had a runway show right before the New York Fashion Week started, okay? And first of all, it's always ridiculous when people who make clothes like this 
have a runway show first of all it is not produced well enough to be on the runways it's kind of like watching the fuck is the name of that brand it was like something like princess polly or some bullshit like that having a runway show there was a bunch of really cheap brands that had runway shows in the past couple of years or whatever the fuck and uh it's always a little cringe and it's the same thing here okay yeah it's a little bit more expensive but it's still not a designer piece i don't know what to tell you it's the same thing if gucci had like a bunch of white shirts that say gucci on it on a runway i would laugh out loud and throw tomatoes at them okay the worst part about this is not that it was a runway show if she wanted to have a fun little runway show why not like okay do it but the issue is that the girl asked her followers her subscribers whatever the fuck to model for her she wanted like you know diverse group of people and what do you think she got all those diverse people and then she didn't pay them the more and more information that people keep sending me about this girl in this business um, is really unsettling because i was told by several people who actually walked most recently in the Jerf avenue september collection at for fashion week in new york city that they weren't even paid allegedly for being there I'm gonna keep this anonymous because apparently she made everyone sign an NDA. Allegedly. Allegedly, she made everyone sign an NDA. Um, hey, I just wanted to reach out in regards to the recent fashion show that Jerf Avenue hosted in September. Throughout the entire time leading up to the show, they never discussed payment. So all the models were in the dark as to whether we were going to be paid. It wasn't until the end of the night that some of us realized we weren't going to be compensated. From what I heard, some of the models even flew out from different states to be a part of the show. For a company that claims to be sustainable and pay fair wages, I found it odd that they didn't pay their models, especially since we were expected to be on site for rehearsals and the actual runway from 10.30 a.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. We were allowed to keep the clothes we wore on the runway and the Jerf Avenue team did send flowers to all the models for participating in the show. However, for a brand that big as they are, I don't think it's ethical to not pay their models. Like a lot of people said that the reason why the models didn't care is because they were stands of Matilda. The worst part about this is that there was literally a lot of people who came from other cities people who were with walkers you know like had some kind of like different types of issues that they had to accommodate and they were not taken care of they, they're you know none of this was accommodated for them to show up there to work for free from 10 30 in the morning to 9 o'clock at night for a brand that really shouldn't have a runway show because their designs are nothing it's nothing if this would have been one issue right an issue that happened with a little brand that doesn't have any employees and people agreed to work together whatever and people did not have to go from all different cities to end up there and they just all agreed to help each other out whatever the fuck that happens often in this industry when people are starting out and they are trying to help each other out whatever this is not the situation because this girl goes to a podcast and tells them very proudly that she's made oh she doesn't know how much it is in usd but that she like says the number in whatever scandinavian currency she's using and it translates to 34 million dollars 34 million dollars were made by jerf avenue in 2023 you want to tell me that with this type of profit with this type of margins clearly her shit is very very cheap if she's selling it at these prices and she gets such a big cut that she can make 34 million dollars so she probably pays literal like cents for it honestly i'm gonna i'm gonna hope for the best and assume that that's not so i'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt you know maybe she has at least some kind of conscience so she did not do that but then we end up in a situation where she did not pay anyone for the work that they've done for her. And she's walking around proudly announcing how much money that her brand has made while they're clearly not paying people who are working for them, at least models. And you would think that maybe that was only one time, right? Even though 2023 was such a lucrative year for them, and even though they could afford to have this whole show, which was not even needed, let's say that all of this was just a one-time thing, right? Well, then explain to me why there's 
testimonials from models from people who are not actual models because the reason listen if there's someone who's signed to an agency the agency is not just gonna agree to bullshit terms like this so they kind of get this protection right but to get signed to a modeling agency it takes time it takes a while sometimes you can get lucky if you just know somebody or whatever the hell but most of the time there's a lot of shit work that you do before you can get signed. Th this is the testimonial, okay? So payment for models. So this is one thing that's been bothering me for a long time with Jerf Avenue. And I would love to hear your opinions and experiences. I think it's super weird how Jerf Avenue always claims to be ethical and how good they're paying their employees. Even though we know that they don't include their factory wor workers in that, which is a shame. But what about all the girls modeling for them? I have models for Jerf Avenue and spent four to five hours shooting at their office and received a goodie bag as a compensation. That's it. And in the goodie bag, they did not even ask which pieces we would like to have or which sizes. So I had to sell my gift again because one item I already owned and the other one was too small. They did not even give a fuck to ask those questions. They had to ask them what they could wear for the actual shoot so they know their sizes and they still gave them the wrong size. Hello? <laughs> like what? When they're planning a new shoot but don't pay their models. This is so unfair because it was honestly hard work. Honestly, yeah, m modeling is not for faint of heart. It sucks so much ass. The shooting days are so long and most productions are so uncoordinated. I wish we had more first ADs the same way that people have them on filming sets on photo shoots because usually they're not really considered to be the main group of people you need for a photo shoot so it's very rare to have an AD but goddamn do you need one you do oh my god because someone needs to come up and say wrap it up we don't have time to keep on shooting this one look you already got the shot I can see it like this one looks good and what you're taking right now is honestly ass <laughs> and you're wasting time we need that we like I honestly I will stand by that there needs to be at least one asshole on the set so people don't get super exhausted i literally go to a set sometimes and i work as like an assistant to a photographer for example or i am the photographer or i do something for a different department and the entire time like by the end of the day because we usually do so many looks i don't know why they had they have to just push all of them into one day but this is what it usually is and by the end of the day i genuinely am so tired i almost throw up that's how bad it is that there's always waste of time on every single look where it's already done it's already good to go but they still keep on going so these girls they had to work through a modeling day yes according to her it's like five hours right so it's not a full day i would say that it's like half a day but it's still not something that you do for free it just isn't and especially when it is a big company that makes profit when we're talking about somebody who's whose company makes maybe fucking $500 in two months or something like that. Sure, you can help them out if you want to, if you're friends, if you're whatever the fuck it, right? Or if they are going to help you out in your other project or whatever, right? Like you have an exchange of skill. But in this case, this is just abuse. This is just ridiculous. Genuinely, we were doing all the work with two of their employees and Matilda only showed up once to say hi, didn't even ask for our names, only looked on her phone, didn't even look into her face when uh, talking to us and then she left again after five minutes, which is again ridiculous. Like, this is the girl who's making 34, okay, let's not, she's not the one who's making all that money but she is definitely making a really pretty penny off of that business however she's there for five minutes and then she dips do you know how much work someone actually has to do to make a photo shoot work i can tell by their photo shoots by what they're doing it is such a lazy ass production and the reason why it looks like that is not because those employees are not doing their jobs it's because there's only two of them running a fucking photo shoot with two models who are not being paid god knows how much those girls or whom, whomever are actually getting paid for running the entire business for matilda because what do you mean what do you mean you have a 34 million dollar business and your production is two people with two models who are not even getting paid girl before i even launched this 
my jewelry brand i had a photo shoot i did one photo shoot even though that's not good for marketing because you need a lot of constant photo shoots to promote your brand nowadays like it's more marketing than it is anything else i just paid for one because that's how i could pay everybody and pay well i could have a makeup artist that gets paid who can you know do her job i could have a stylist i could have a photographer i can have two models who are also getting paid and a studio that's being paid for and all of that kind of stuff like at least you need a photographer stylist makeup person and the model so at least four people in the production at least someone also needs to take care of all the other logistics so let's say five right with you me included as the logistics person let's say right at least five what do we have here this is not how it's done okay this is what our world the way that we're producing everything nowadays is promoting this leech behavior and thinking that it's normal to not pay creatives if you think that you're doing the job matilda let me let me tell you you should be paying the other people who are actually doing the job because if you think that what they're doing is not essential if what they're doing is not important to your brand do it yourself literally do yourself you know for this channel because i know that i cannot pay an editor a good wage i just don't have an editor and i edit everything myself because that's what you do as a responsible person who does not think that everyone owes them shit okay and the funniest thing is i oh my god i can tell you so much tea about like youtubers and how shitty they are they think that just because they have followers or whatever it's <laughs> it's like an honor to work for them or some shit and they pay dust i heard someone paying 60 or from 40 to 60 bucks for editing an entire video for them you can go fuck yourself actually with those wages are you fucking kidding me that's less than minimum wage and the person also needs to pay for licenses for the programs for the computer that they're using and other things like that I am so tired of this like lazy ass behavior and all of those social media people who do not have just a, a little bit of creativity or a little bit of care or even goddamn conscience. Because the thing is, listen, I am going to give her some, you know, I'm going to cut some slack here. Maybe she did not know about some of these things happening. Maybe she was busy with something else that day. Maybe it's just like how it comes off to the public maybe she's not as terrible at doing this you know regardless of all of those things the business is still what it is a cash cow instead of an actual clothing brand okay let alone someone who's a designer who can go after people being like why are you stealing my shit okay when it comes to all of this in terms of like stealing designs and whatever i want to show you an example of a brand that at least i would understand if for example they would go after somebody and not creators who are talking about those dupes or whatever but like the companies that produce it the factories that produce it etc i saw an ad that showed someone entirely ripping off their design so the person i'm talking about right now is marina iri absolutely adore their work it is what real design is okay absolutely beautiful yes it is a brand the pieces are being sold but this is an actual designer this is the type of person who can have a runway show and i would not think that it's strange because they have something to offer okay and you probably have seen these on your instagram here or there because i think that their stuff went viral if at least a few times that's my assumption i have been following their stuff for a while now but Dang. 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 we talked about how people rip designers off this is the dress that we were talking about so for example for this dress they literally paint the fabric in their studio they literally do it by hand their pattern making is on another level okay you can see in the way that it's sitting on the body how beautiful the fabric is the way that the pattern is made the way that the fabric is painted it is a piece of art low-key even though it is 
a dress that's not like uncomfortable to move in per se for example how it would be with iris von herpen stuff right but it just has a lot of merit a lot of things to offer in general yeah you can go and legally try to like take something down regardless of that marina doesn't really have to do that <laughs> because she's not going to lose sales for one specific reason and this is usually what you have to kind of prove in court that you're losing money because they're taking away your business by selling a similar product or whatever the reason why she's not losing clients is because they're coming for quality they are coming for innovation they're coming to support the designer to make sure that they can continue on working on their stuff and releasing something new once in a while like for example this new dress absolutely insane like are you fucking kidding me are you seeing this draping this is crazy it's so good like genuinely <sighs> It's just absolutely gorgeous. Like, it's sickening, right? Of course, the designer herself, she says that it does hurt her to see it being ripped off. But that's the thing. She actually has a point, at least in terms of being hurt by it. And as the public, we should support her business instead of those knockoffs, right? But this is the type of person who contributes to the design world to the art world in general to compare to someone like Matilda Jerf who is just like a marketing person basically who thinks that <laughs> this makes any sense to create something so embarrassingly basic and then go after people and try to take it down especially the goddamn videos like that's just absolutely ridiculous honestly i'm not gonna lie it's always going to be very hurtful for designers to see someone stealing their stuff it's so it's always gonna be hurtful and it happens in so many things for example for makeup artists who have a specific style and they get hired for their specific style and then someone rips them off entirely stylists style because there's always you know like a type of thing that the stylists are going for or a thing that they do best that people start stealing i have seen that happen with my friends who are designers stylists photographers makeup artists you name it but the fact of the matter is that everyone in the city or everyone in the network of who you're working with, everyone who's doing anything worthy of noting, anyone who's doing, who's an actual creator contributes to the art or to the design world or photography world, whatever, we all know. It's kind of like an unspoken thing. We all know when someone is starting to copy somebody else and no one wants to work with them because of that. So don't copy other people. There will be things that look similar, for example, to somebody, but if you know that you're uh, contributing something and you believe in it continue with it you know there's go always going to be false accusations too of course because some things are just not original enough to be fighting over or to be you know shaking over try to have integrity try to create something unique to you at least there will be people who have a similar type of art style to you there there are for example brands or designers who do have a similar like in some way of or shape or form in terms of aesthetics you can broad strokes you can put them into a similar aesthetic but they're still different right they just could be working better together yeah matilda <laughs> is fighting tiktok creators to take down the videos or whatever okay it's not her it's her ip firm whatever the hell whoever the hell is doing it the fact of the matter is everybody knows that this is not something to be fighting over everybody knows that this is not fashion everyone knows that this is at least it's not design okay maybe it's the fashion of basic people i don't know but it's not design it's not art it's not even adjacent to it i'm sorry she can do whatever the fuck she wants genuinely godspeed but you have to know what you contribute to the field not everyone is an actual designer. If you're making something that doesn't even have anything recognizable about it, you just have to accept it and stop acting like you are an actual designer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? Because the thing is, you can make basic things that still have something unique about them. This isn't it. And down to the logo. Of course, everyone's gonna have a black and white logo whatever i'm not talking about that what i'm talking about is uh, the logo itself <sighs> she has money to get a designer to do something with this to do something for her she may have had the designer do this and then the part that would be even worse if the designer did something else and she gave them notes to change it to something like this 
no i need you all to stop gaslighting people into thinking that this are the fashion girls okay i'm tired of this N none of that anymore thank you very much if you want to have a lifestyle a basic lifestyle girl just call her that leave them out of the fashion field i'm begging you because there are so many people so many talented people like marina erie who deserve your attention and support out there there are so many people like that yet every other week we have another matilda jerf we have another white girl who uses clean girl aesthetic i'm tired of this done this is it <laughs> this is a very ranty video and if you are offended or you think that i'm like you know being condescending or whatever who cares who cares <laughs> like don't worry about it the girl has her money why are you stressed about her i would stress about people with walkers who had to travel to model for her and not even get paid afterwards that's wh who i would be worrying about honestly i'm so tired of this lazy bullshit i'm gonna go do something else with my life than rant about stupid ass businesses anyway bye